Welcome back guys, this is Miss Henson. Today we're going to be continuing the lesson from yesterday with substitution and we're going to be doing it with word problems today. So just a quick review on what you did yesterday. So if we have this problem, to do substitution all you have to do is solve for either x or y and then plug it into the other equation, substitute it in for that variable. So you want to look for the equation, you want to look for the variable, the x or y in the equations that don't have anything with them. Those are going to be the easiest ones to solve. Like up here, this x, this x doesn't have a number, so that one's going to be easy to solve for. This y, it does have a number, so that one's not going to be the easiest. On the bottom, one third x that has a number so it's not going to be the easiest thing to solve for but the y it doesn't have a number so it'll be pretty easy to solve for so you could solve for the x that's by itself or the y that's by itself i'm gonna go with let's go with x so if i solve for x i just have to get it by itself so we have this minus 3y so how do i get rid of minus 3y that's right, I'm going to add 3y to the other side. So then x equals 0 plus 3y. We don't need 0, so just bring down 3y. Then we're going to take that, and we're going to substitute it in for x, because that's what it equals. It equals x. So we substitute it in for x. So we'll do 1 third times 3y, which is our x equals over here, and bring everything else down, plus y equals 2. Then we'll just solve it out, order of operations. So distribute this out, 1 third times 3y, a third times 3 is just 1, and we'll bring down our y, bring down everything else. Then combine your like terms. So y plus y is 2y. And then this is 2 times y, so how do we get rid of that? What's the opposite? We're going to divide. So divide by that 2 to cancel it out. And 2 divided by 2, that's 1. So then we take that 1, that's going to be in our point, in our solution. That's y equals 1. So on y, we're going to put 1. So we have to solve for x. So take that 1 and plug it back in. So x equals, and you can plug it in anywhere. I chose this equation because it's already solved for x. So all I have to do is plug in 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. But if you want to plug it into one of these equations at the top, you're still going to get the same answer. You'll still get 3. So then that'll go in the x spot. And that's my answer, 3, 1. So we're going to do the same thing today with that, but we're going to apply it to a word problem. So when we're doing word problems, we have to set them up. We have to figure out what x equals, what y equals. And we have, a, uh, we have two, types of word, two types of equations we can have. We can write them in slope-intercept form, and we can write them in standard form. We talked about both of these back in Chapter 2, maybe Chapter 3, um, and we labeled what all of these were. With your y equals mx plus b, your y is your output, your dependent variable, and your range. Your x is your input, your independent variable, and your domain. And with y equals mx plus b, you're going to get a slope, which is your rate of change. And you're going to get a y-intercept, which is your initial value. So you're going to get one slope, one y-intercept. For standard form, when we did these back in the last chapter, we said there was no clear independent and dependent variable. Our x and y are not going to depend on each other. Like, for example... Going to work, the hours that you work, and making money, that depends on each other. You have to go to work. You have to work those hours to get money. 
But if we're just talking cats and dogs and trying to figure out how many cats and dogs there are, those don't depend on each other. Just because you have cats doesn't mean you have to have dogs. Just because you have no cats doesn't mean you have no dogs. These have nothing to do with each other. So there's no independent and no dependent. Your A and B here, the numbers with your variables, those are still going to be rates of change. You're going to have at least two. They may be one. They may both be one. But you're going to have two rates of change. And then this C over here, this is your total. Over here on your y equals mx plus b, this was your initial, your starting point. For standard form, your total is your ending point. That's your maximum. So this is where it ends. So initial, or slope intercept form has an initial, a starting point. And standard form is where it ends. It has a total. And then there are different questions that will be asked in the, in the problems to lead you to what form you're going to use as well. For slope-intercept form, they're going to ask when it will be the same or what makes it even. But for standard form, we're going to see how many of something, like how many cats, how many dogs, or how much. So for slope-intercept form, we're going to have one slope and an initial value. For standard form, we're going to have two slopes and a total. So one slope initial value, two slopes, and a total. That's your difference here. Oop, this is not scrolling. One second. Okay, so to set these up, example one. In a talent show of singing and comedy acts, there are 12 acts. Singing acts are five minutes long, and comedy acts are three minutes long. The show lasts for 50 minutes. How many of each kind of act are there in the show? So what two things are we looking for? What do we not know about this problem? Go to your question for this. How many of each kind of act are there in the show? Well, when it says how many, if we go back up to our chart, how many is going to be a question they ask for standard form. So we're going to write our equation in AX plus BY equals C, which also means we're going to have two slopes and we're going to have a total value. So AX plus BY equals C. But how many of what? How many of each kind of act? What are your acts here? We have singing acts. Oh, that's not where that goes. Sorry, that's where the answer goes. We're going to define our variables. So we have singing acts and we have comedy acts. Do singing acts depend on comedy acts? Just because we have a singing act, do we have to have a comedy act? No, that doesn't make sense. So these don't depend on each other. There's no independent or dependent. So to do your X and Y, you're just going to put them in order. Which one did it tell you first? It told you singing. So that's going to be X. So the number of singing acts. Which one did it say second? Comedy. So that'll be Y. The number of comedy So we're looking for how many of each kind of act, the number of singing acts and the number of comedy acts. For our equation, because these don't depend on each other, because we're going to have two slopes and a total, like I said earlier, we're going to put it in AX plus BY equals C. So for A and B, you want to find your slopes. X down here is singing acts. So how many singing acts do we have? Well, we don't know. That's the question. We don't know how many singing acts we have, so we're just going to put X. How many comedy acts do we have? 
We don't know again because it's asking us how many. We have to solve for that. So why? How many total acts, that's what C is, that's your total. How many total acts do you have? Because this is singing acts plus comedy acts has to equal your total acts. So there are 12 total acts. So acts plus acts equals total acts. Then for our second equation, because we're doing a system of equations, so there's got to be two, what other information did they give us? Well, they told us singing acts are five minutes long, comedy acts are three minutes long, and the show lasts 50 minutes. So we have all this time here, five minutes, three minutes, and 50 minutes. So for singing acts for X, how many minutes are those? What's your slope here? Singing acts are five minutes long. So each act is five minutes. So five X's. How many minutes are comedy acts? Comedy acts are three minutes long. So our slope for comedy is three. And then what's your total amount of uh, minutes? Our total amount is 50 minutes. So we have 5 minutes for singing plus 3 minutes per comedy act and that's going to equal our total minutes. Don't mix your values up. Acts plus acts, we don't know how many acts there are. That's why it's x and y. And that's going to equal our total acts. Minutes plus minutes has to equal total minutes. So we had five minutes for singing, so 5x, three minutes for comedy, so 3y, and that's a total of 50 minutes. So keep acts with acts and minutes with minutes. Then we're going to do substitution. What do you want to solve for? We can solve for x or we can solve for y. Pick the one that doesn't have a number to make it easier. Well, if we go to our first equation, x doesn't have a number and y doesn't have a number, so we can pick either one. For our second equation, they both have numbers, so we don't want to go there. That'll be complicated. So we can go with either one of these without numbers. Um, let's just go with y. So how would we solve for y? Well, it's adding x, so what's the opposite? Subtract x to the other side. So y equals, this is a number and this is a variable. We cannot combine those. Just bring them down. Your negative x plus 12, because it's positive. Then we're going to take that, and we're going to substitute it in for y on the other equation. So instead of y right here, I'm going to write that whole phrase, negative x plus 12. Leave everything else the same. 5x plus 3 equals 50. The only thing we're changing is that y. We're putting in this whole phrase for y. And then we solve it. You're going to have ba the same basic steps every single time. You're going to distribute. So 3 times negative x, oh, write down your 5x, 3 times negative x, negative 3x, 3 times 12, is 36, so distribute, then you're going to combine like terms if you have any. Do we have like terms on the same side? Yes, we have 5x minus 3x, so that's 2x. Then you're either going to add or subtract. You have a plus 36, so we're going to subtract 36. Do the opposite. So 50 minus 36 is 14. 
Last, we got that 2 times x, so we're going to divide. That's the opposite of 2 times x. Divide out 2. And I'll draw my answer over here. So x equals 14 divided by 2 is 7. So we have our x now. We know x is 7. We need to find y. To find y, plug it back into any equation. You can go back to x plus y equals 12. You can plug it into 5x plus 3y equals 50. Or you can plug it into the one we solved down here. I like to go to that one because it's already solved for y. So we have negative x. So we're going to put negative 7 plus 12. All you're doing is changing x to 7. Bring down the negative, bring down the plus 12. And then plug it in your calculator. Negative 7 plus 12 is 5. So that's your whole point. 7, 5. So then let's answer it with correct units. The question back at the top said how many of each kind of act are there in the show? So we're going to take this point and fill out our answer. X was singing acts. So X is 7. So 7 singing acts. And then Y was comedy acts. So Y is 5. So 5 comedy acts. And now we've got it solved. Okay, let's try the next one. Example 2. So a lot of people in, us, in the past have asked us, why do we have to keep defining the variables? What's so important about it? Why do we care? So we define variables so we know what we're talking about. If we didn't define X and Y on that problem, would you have any idea that we were talking about singing acts and comedy acts? Because there's a lot of stuff in that, inform in that problem. You have singing acts, comedy acts, you have minutes, you have totals, you have a lot of stuff. So we just find these variables so we know exactly what we're looking for. So we know what to solve for. That way we don't solve for the wrong thing. So let's take that and solve example two. Adult tickets to a play cost $22. Tickets for children cost $15. Tickets for a group of 11 people cost $228. How many children and how many adults were in the group? So what type of equation do we use? Do we use y equals mx plus b, where we have one slope and we have an initial value? Or do we use ax plus by equals c, where we have two slopes and we have a total value? Well, what do we have here? Adult tickets are $22 each. That's a slope because that's $22 per ticket. Children tickets are $15 each. That's a slope because it's $15 per ticket. So we have two slopes here. But what are these other numbers? Tickets for a group of 11 people cost $228. Are those initial values or is that the total? That's the total. That's your whole group. Your whole group consists of a total of 11 people and it costs you a total of $228. So because we have totals and we have slopes, we're going with AX plus BY equals C. And the question asks how many, that's another way you can tell it's going to be standard form, AX plus BY equals C, how many children and how many adults were in the group. So what do we not know about this problem? We have a lot of numbers. We have a lot of information. What are the two things the question is asking for? The question asks for how many children and how many adults. That's what we're looking for. 
Do they depend on each other? Just because you have children in your group, do you have to have adults? Or just because you have five adults, do you have to have 20 children? No, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many adults and children there are. They don't depend on each other. So, we're just going to go in the order of the problem. The problem first said adults. So, that's what we're going to put first. That's going to be our X. So, X is going to be the number of adults. Now, when these are multiple choice, you're going to get asked a lot if it's the number of adults or the cost of adults. Which one do we not know? Do we know how many adults? No, because that's what the question said. Do we know the cost of each adult? Yes, we know the adults cost $22. Because we know this, we don't use that as our variable. Our variable has to be what we don't know at all. Okay, what else? What did it give us second? It gave us adults first. Which one did it give us second? It gave us children. Children second, so we're going to use that as Y. And again, it's the number of children, not the cost of each ticket for children, because we know the cost. The cost is $15. Your X and Y have to be what you do not know. So then for our equations, we're going to AX plus BY equals C. You can start with your variables, you can start with your slopes, or you can start with your totals. Last time I started with the variables. This time I'm going to start with the totals to show you how to do it that way. What are our two totals? Well, we have a total of 11 people, so we know one of them has to equal 11. And we have a total of $228. So one of them has to equal 228. So let's go to 11. 11 is people. So within this equation for your total people, you want to have people. How many adults do we have? Let's go with X. How many adults do we have? We have no idea. So we're just going to put X. How many Y's do we have? How many children? No idea. So we're just going to put Y. So people plus people equals your total people. This is total people. We can't put money over here. 228, that's your total money. So that's where we're going to put all this money up here. So for adults, for X, how much money were they? They were $22. So $22 for X. Plus, how much for children, for Y? Children were $15. So we just put 15 for Y, for children. So money plus money equals your total money. Now when you write your equations in the computer or on your work, don't put the words. All you're going to put are the equations. X plus Y equals 11, 22X plus 15Y equals 228. I'm only writing these so you can see exactly what's in that equation. You can't take people plus people and get money. That's not how life works. You have to have money and money to get money. You have to have people and people to get people. So how do we solve it? Using substitution, what do we do? What do you want to solve for, x or y? So last time I solved for y, so this time I'll show you how to do it with solving for x. So take your first one, because x is by itself, how do we get rid of that plus y? We're just going to do the opposite, subtract it over. So x equals all of that, negative y and a positive 11. Then we're going to take that, it's solved for x, so we're going to plug it in to x. So bring everything else down, 22, but instead of x, we're going to put that phrase, negative y plus 11. Bring everything else down, plus 15y, equals 228. 
Don't mess with anything except that X. It's pretty much the same steps every time, just like I told you last time. You're going to distribute. So 22 times negative Y, negative 22Y. 22 times 11 is 242. And then bring the rest down after you distribute. Then combine any like terms if you have them. You're not always going to have them, but most of the time you will. What are our like terms on the same side? We have negative 22y and 15y. So what's negative 22 plus 15? Negative 7y. Bring everything else down. Then we're either going to add or subtract. What do we have here? We have plus 242, so what's the opposite? Minus 242 to the other side. So 228 minus 242, negative 14. And last, we're going to divide out that negative 7. So y equals negative 14 divided by negative 7. Negative divided by negative is positive. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So that's the first part of our point, our xy point. We know y is now 2. Then we got to solve for x by plugging that in. You can plug it in anywhere. The first equation, the second equation, or the one you solved for x. Like I said earlier, I like going to this one because it's already solved for x. So I just have to plug it in. So negative y, negative 2, plus 11. Negative 2 plus 11 is 9. So x is 9. Then we'll just use this point to answer our question. How many children and how many adults? Well, what is x? X is the number of adults, so how many adults? Nine. Y is the number of children, so how many children? Two. So that group had nine adults and two children. Okay, and example three. The difference of the side lengths of two squares is 10 centimeters. The sum of the side lengths of, is 18 centimeters. What are the lengths of their side? So what two things do we not know? What's the question asking for? The question is asking for the lengths of their sides. So we got the small square sides and the large square sides. Do they depend on each other? Just because your small square has two inch sides, does the large square have to have five inch sides? Does that make sense? No, they don't depend on each other. So whichever one they give you first, that's gonna be X. So the problem up here doesn't give us any of those first, but the question does. So we're gonna go the length of the small side first. So, length of the small square, which is A, and this is going to be in centimeters because we're going to have to put correct units up here, so make sure you know it's in centimeters. And then Y is the second one, the large square, so the length of the large square sides. which is square B over here. And again, this is going to be in centimeters because that's what every, everything is in up here. So make sure you remember that because we're going to need it. So um, I'll go with totals again. What are our two totals? Because those are the only numbers they gave us. The difference is a total of 10. So we know one of them has to equal 10. The sum of the side lengths is 18. So that's your other total. So we know the other one has to equal 18. 
So what's the information here? What do we have for 10? It says the difference in the side lengths of the two squares is 10. Difference right here means you're going to subtract. So we're going to be subtracting x and y. But which one goes first? It matters because if we do 4 minus 2, we're going to get 2. But if we do 2 minus 4, our answer is negative 2. So which one goes first, A or B? For this one, it has to be B. That's the length of your, uh, so Y in this case, that's the length of the square for side B. The reason this one has to go first is because it's larger. Our answer down here is a positive 10. If this comes out to be, what would give us 10? Let's go 20. If this is 20 and this is 10, if we subtract them, does 20 minus 10 give us 10? Yes. But if, 10, if we do it backward, 10 minus 20, does that give us 10? No, it gives us negative 10. The larger one has to go first for us to get a positive answer. It has to be large minus small. If we do small minus large, it's always going to be negative. And our answer here is positive. So the large one has to go first. For the other equation, it said that one's going to total up to 18. It said the sum of our side lengths. Sum means to add. So we're going to take our side lengths and add. Which one goes first? If we have those same numbers, just pretend it's 10 and 20. Oh, hold on, we have to equal 18. So let's say it's 8 and 10. If we add those up, 8 plus 10, do we get 18? Yes. If we flip it around and we do B first, 10 plus 8, is that 18? Yes. When you're adding, it doesn't matter which one goes first. So we can put X first, we can put Y first, it doesn't matter. When you're subtracting, it does matter. So make sure you watch that subtraction. Okay, so let's solve them. So to use substitution, we have to solve one of them for x or y. All of our x's and y's are pretty much alone, so you can pick which one you want. I'll just go with the first one. Um, let's just go ahead and solve for y since it's there. So how do we solve this for y? How do we get rid of a minus x? Well, we do the opposite. We're going to add x. So again, we can't combine them because 10 is not a like term with x. So we just bring them down. A positive x and a positive 10. Then we're going to take that part that we solved for y and plug it in to y because we solved for y. So bring everything else down. x plus equals 18. But instead of y, we're going to put that phrase x plus 10. Now if we distribute this positive, what's positive times x? Just positive x. What's positive times 10? Just a positive 10. Technically it's positive 1, but that's not going to change anything. So we can just bring it down. So we distributed. It didn't change anything, but we did it. Then combine your like terms. What are your like terms on this side? x and x. What's x plus x? 2x. And what do we do next? We're either going to add or subtract. We have plus 10, so what's the opposite? Minus 10. So 18 minus 10 is 8. 
And last, how do we get rid of 2 times x? We divide. That's the opposite. Divide by that 2. So x equals 8 divided by 2 is 4. So for our answer, we know x is 4. We need to find y. So what do we do? We're going to plug this into any of our equations. You can do the first equation, second equation, or the one solved down here. Like I've said every other time, I like to go with this one because it's already solved for y. So just plug it in. x is 4 and then plus 10. So 4 plus 10 is 14. Perfect. Then we'll just use that answer to answer our questions. What's the side length of the small square side? Well, the small square was x, and x down here is 4, so it's 4. But for what? What's our correct units? That's what I had you make sure you remembered earlier, in centimeters. So this is 4 centimeters. Then the large square side. The length of the large square is y, so our y down here is 14, so it's 14 what? These are in centimeters, so 14 centimeters. That is it. Okay, that's all the examples of your practice next. I'm going to help you set up the next one because it's got... Um, something that I just want to make sure you know how to do. So for practice number one, all your directions are up here. Define your variables, your x equals and y equals. For b, you're going to write your equations. And for c, you're going to solve and answer with correct units. So a farm raises a total of 220 chickens and pigs. The number of legs of the stock in the farm totals 520. How many chickens and pigs are on the farm? So what two things are we looking for? What do we not know? What does the question ask? The question said how many chickens and pigs? Which one came first? The chicken or the pig? The chicken. So number of chickens goes first. Which one came second? The pigs. So number of pigs goes second. Now for this one, I just want to make sure you can set up the equation. So what are your two totals? Your first total is 220. Your second total is 520. What is 220? 220 is all the chickens and pigs, all the animals. So in this one you have to have animals plus animals equals animals. So our first variable x, how many chickens do we have? No idea, so we're just gonna put x. For our second one, for y, how many pigs do we have? No idea, so just put y. The second equation is where everybody tends to miss this problem. What is 520? 520 is the number of legs. So these are the total legs. This was your total animals. So for x, for chickens, how many eggs, not eggs, how many legs do chickens have? Chickens have two legs. A lot of people in the past said four, some people just weren't sure, but chickens have two legs. And then for y, how many legs do pigs have? Pigs have four legs. So you have legs for chickens plus legs for pigs equals your total legs. So those are your equations to write down. And then I'm going to let y'all solve it. I just wanted to make sure you could set up the legs. 
Okay, so do this one, do the rest of your practice, and good luck.